you've decided you're going to make the easy crochet soaker, you've got yarn. In this case, I've gone, I've decided to go with a lovely Aran Blue Face Leicester. Uh, uh, dyed or undyed versions of this are available on my website, uh, woollywompins.co.uk. When it arrives, this is how it looks. It's a twisted skein. Now, for a lot of new crocheters, um, you won't have come across one of these before. You, you're you going to get in a, a tangle if you don't uh, know what you're doing. So, let's help you out here. So, you'll notice that at the top, if you just give it a little pull, you can see a hole. On the other end, there's, there's not a hole because this is the part where one end of the skein, or hank rather, is tucked into the other end. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna look here, see these, this yarn going across here, all of it, all like that. You're gonna just squish your fingers in, like that. When your fingers meet, and there's none of, of this direction yarn left, you're just gonna pull it out, and let it unravel. There you go. So it's important to check that you haven't tangled it at this stage. If you give it a nice, they call it thwacking, don't they? <laughs> like this. You'll see that the yarn is, is all neatly lined up. And that's gonna help us when we're putting it into a ball. It's also tied at three places, so you'll see that here we've got a tie, pull it down, there's another tie here, and then here we've got a tie which seems to have an added loop. Can you see that? So this is the beginning and the start of the skein. So what you need to do, you need to find something that you can hang it on. Now this could be the back of your chair, um, it could be whatever you're comfortable hanging it on. Hanging it on. Get my words out, hang it in, hanging it on. <laughs> so for me, I always end up popping it on the end of my spinning wheel like that. This is designed for it, it seems, <laughs> probably isn't, but that's how I feel anyway. So now we're gonna carefully take some scissors and making sure that we don't cut through any of this, we're gonna go by the knot and just snip it. This is down and you can gently pull that and your yarn is still intact. You're going to get the next tie and with, hold it by the knot. Take your scissors and cut by the knot so that you make sure you're not damaging any of the skein. No damage. And now we come to the beginning and the end. So we're going to do the same thing here, but this time, let's, let's do the same thing first. This time I'm going to cut across both strands. Because when we pull here, as you can see, one tends to tuck behind, and then the other one comes to the front, as you can you see that? Now, the easiest thing to do is just do your normal roll of uh, ball of wool. So this is how I've done it since I was a child. There's many ways to do it. Wrap around my thumb, wrap around my second finger, figure eight, start again for you. I think you didn't do the first finger. Right, around your thumb, around your finger, around your thumb, around your finger. It hasn't got to be tight. And I'm holding the end there with, oops. I'm holding the end with my fingers here. So around, and you just do that until there's a nice amount on your fingers, see? Nice sturdy amount. And then you transfer what's on your thumb to your finger, or the other arm, depends on how you've been taught. Pull it off, making sure it doesn't unravel, and just start wrapping the yarn around. Turn it. Up some more and then pull from here but you always do it gently so that you're not tangling and if it doesn't seem to be coming just lift it up it'll come 
you turning, wrapping rather, and then turn right hand to turn about 30 degrees each turn. Gives you a nice uh, round ball shape then at the end. So I'm going to video myself doing the whole thing so that you can see in real time um, how quickly it takes to make a ball. So my husband's just popped in to ask if I got much done upstairs. Yeah. Hello, Nathan. <laughs> well I got quite a bit done. Down the studio. Yes. Um, yeah, we managed to get quite a bit. We were sorting it out as, as we're all at home because of coronavirus. Myself and the children went up and we, uh, we were actually looking for some felt that I bought a while ago. Uh, sheets of felt and I've kept them in a folder. Do you think I can find the folder? No, and we've just spent another two or three hours up there and we've looked everywhere. It's just not there, but you know, when you've looked everywhere, but you know it's there, it'll probably turn up somewhere silly, right? So when it gets about this size, <coughs> where my finger and thumb have been there, I now turn them like that, just to get the center of gravity of the ball uh, more even and now I'm as it gets bigger I tend to turn the ball can you see it what I'm doing I turn the ball as I'm wrapping with my finger so there's 166 meters usually to 100 grams so you know that it's going to take a little while So yeah, we were looking for the felt because the children are going to uh, make like a banner, you know, like the Bayou Tapestry. Well, rather than use embroidery, they're going to um, use felt pieces and they're going to use different techniques, wet felting, uh, sewing with a machine, hand sewing, to apply the felt to a background. So they've... Uh, not started their, their written plans yet. They've got to do some drawings by, what day is it? By tomorrow, actually. We're gonna see their drawings. The children are here. Cassie's over here. Don't know if you wanna come say hello? No, not today. And Nathaniel's just coming down the stairs. Do you wanna come say hello? Not today. <laughs> so you'll hear a lot of things going on because this is my house, you know? The family are here. But although they're here, they're no trouble at all. <laughs> okay, so ball is getting bigger. I'm gonna go fast now, so let's get it going, she. Don't be scared of it, it'll only drop on the floor, won't it? Like I nearly did then, just adds to the fun. Now I've used the natural fibre because when I'm um, actually videoing the making of the soaker, I want you to be able to see the definition of the stitches clearly and be able to follow what I'm doing. But I would really advise that you go, go for it and get the colourful yarns because um, our children, you can put them in, in pale colours all you like, but they always look better than they in nice, bright, bouncy colours. So you'll see if you have a look on my website that I absolutely love colour, which I never used to. I used to be like a pastels person until I had my third child. And that's when I started to really investigate colour and how colour goes together and how it doesn't go together in some cases and how some of the most unusual and horrible colours, when they're put together, can look really, really beautiful. So um, I'm sure you can hear the dog barking. That's not my dog. That's our next door neighbour's dog. He loves to bark at everything. Like that, my front door. <laughs> so can you see how the yarn is just coming nice and 
naturally just flowing around. There's no pulling, you know, pull, pull, pull. You don't do that. Like I give it a little pull like that. If it doesn't come when you pull, then you get, you have to lift up the skein. You have to lift up and just release it from wherever it's caught. Because if you don't, if you just try and pull it, that's when you're going to get your tangles. That's when you're going to get your yarn bath, as they say. That's when you're going to think, oh, I'll just give it to the cat to play with. <laughs> Cats, I think, there. see now? See how I, I just pulled? So this has come up from the bottom and it shouldn't have. So I'm just going to lift that up. There we are. Before we get a tangle. And you can see I'm still turning the ball as I'm winding. Again, caught so we don't pull, we just lift. Right, so it's catching a few times now. So we, what we do, just gonna move it there. To see if it's the spinning wheel that's catching it. If I can get it. There we go. Do do. can still hear my breath probably it's quite it's been really labored but it's getting better on steroids now again hopefully they'll do the trick get my lungs back the way they should be turn in see the end in sight now. So say you've got the, uh, the back of a chair, a dining room chair for example, you'd be doing the same similar thing, hanging out on one side of the chair, one corner of the back of the chair, and being careful not to pull it off so it all lands on the floor and tangles. And guiding it with your hand when you go over the top of the chair or the spinning wheel in my case there you go Phew. i can't believe it's seven o'clock and it's still lovely and bright once those clocks go forward it's as though it just springs everything back doesn't it or forward rather i should say Obviously, you get don't just get the one hour of extra light. It increases every day, but it seems to do really fast, which is lovely. Especially when we're in lockdown. So I would say we've got about 10 metres left now. This can sometimes get fiddly when there we go, as I say it, but when you get towards the end, the, the fibres tend to stick together a bit more. If you just pull, pull down the ones that shouldn't be up, and you'll be fine. There we go, see, tangle, tangle. Now you could think, ah! But if you look carefully, it's just one strand pull, lifting up others that should be down there. So you just pull them off, it's, there we go. We can stop that by keeping our, taking it from the bottom and from the top instead of just the top, like we were doing earlier. So there we go, just grabbing it down the bottom. And when I say I'm grabbing it down the bottom, I mean I'm grabbing the other end of the skein and holding it down whilst I pull the lead strand. That was my dog, and you could hear have a bit of a yawn. <laughs> if it picked up, I don't know, maybe it didn't pick it up. <laughs> but as you can see, it becomes natural. You just you just can see how to stop it tangling. One thing I would say is if you're in a tangle, just stop. Try to get it back to the skein shape as much as you can to work out where the problem has come from. So, here we are. Oop, see, the very last path gets tangled. 
There we go. So we found our lovely ball of Blueface, Blueface Leicester, pure wool, untreated. And this is going to make our easy crochet soaker. So see you in the next episode. I love cinnamon. Oh, it's lovely and soft too.